So in the book of Acts, chapter 1, um, the ver verse 8 is the theme verse of the whole book. So we want to lead up to uh, verses 4 through 8 if we can. On one occasion, while he was eating, you know, when you have something in uh, you know, commas, you could take out that whole section and it would all make sense. On one occasion, he gave them this command. But with the commas, he put in this phrase that just added a little bit to it. And I wonder, like, why did he add? Why didn't, why didn't he say, like, while he was praying or while he was preaching? But it was while they were eating. You know, there's tremendous, tremendous power that comes when we eat, when we eat together with people. Um, think about this. When you eat together with somebody else, um, you, you can't help but want to talk. You, you start to talk with one another. Have you ever had breakfast alone? Um, and they're like, it's, that's awkward. You know, like you're eating breakfast. So you turn on the television because you want to interact with another human being. Or you can't turn on the television and you read the back of the cereal box and you um, get the ingredients. And because there literally is something about eating that opens up our spirit. We have noticed that as a church. We've been thinking back through some of the the powerful moments as a church and like meals together we start to eat together and then we go eat and pray or you go eat and study or you go eat and worship but the eating is not just well we need to eat let's get that done the eating actually opens up our spirit in a big way we've been thinking about that and figuring out like how can we eat together more with people in fact if you want to bond with somebody you want to get to know somebody you want to be friends with somebody go out to eat with them <laughs> like that eating like that's how you probably got married you know you went out to eat together you had a date and there were probably some food that was involved in that because eating opens up our spirit begin to think about in your life when you're eating what you're doing and what would it be like if you say, God, would you enter my meals? Would you enter our conversations around the table? Uh, that's probably even a big reason why we pray before we eat in different things. God, be present at this table. So while they were eating, he gave us this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We talked about being baptized, immersed in the Holy Spirit, and being, what are we immersed in. But he's, the command was simply this, don't leave. Why would they leave? There, was, there are three things that I believe that are really big a part of this. Is They wanted to leave because they were scared. Remember when they were all locked into that room together? Like This was exactly the place where Jesus was crucified. And it would have been very big temptation for them to say, we're not welcome here, let's get out of here. Um, this, is not, this is not a safe place. If you are going to become who God called you to be, you have to face down your fears. Do you know that? If, if you want to live free, it is not going to become from running away from fear. It is going to be pressing through fear and saying fear is not going to determine where I go I'm going to stay right here until God tells me to go. So that freedom was one big thing. An another big thing was like he wanted them to wait together, stay together. The togetherness was going to be a very big deal. When, we're, when we interact together with somebody else, our spirits begin to get contagious. Have you ever... Um, been with somebody you work with on you work with daily and then your language starts to become their language even though it wasn't your language at one time because you enter you were together think about this they were together pursuing god and they could do something together that they couldn't do alone this being filled with the spirit needed them to be together the last thing i think is really important is um God was trying to set up a moment in time that they were made for. He was bringing people together, bringing some people here, and he just, it was timing. God not only wants you to do the right thing, he wants you to do the right thing at the right time. You know that God is or ordering our steps if we listen to him. 
He is putting us at the right place at the right time to make a difference in somebody else's life. You see, every one of us has a story that somebody is waiting to hear. What if you just begin to say, God, would you? I want to I be so in tune with your spirit that I'm waiting and I'm walking when you tell me to go so that we can interact at the right time. So he says, wait, wait, wait. You need power before you can go on. As they gathered around him, they said, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Aren't we still asking that question this week? Um, many people asking that exact same question. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. That's, that's a bigger question. <laughs> um, the bigger question, the, the most important question is what lives within us. Um, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This verse is the theme verse for the whole book. They're going to receive power. That power is going to make them witnesses right there in Jerusalem. And it is going to go to the ends of the earth. But more than just being a theme verse for this book, this is the mission statement for your life. This is the mission statement for my life. First, God wants us to receive the power of the Holy Spirit up upon every one of us. You, if you've heard any preacher preach on this, that preacher has described that this word is dunamis, the word for dynamite. It is a word that, like, can you imagine when dynamite goes off inside something, it impacts out, and it's saying, I want the power of the Holy Spirit to impact, like come inside of you and impact out to the world. This is how far and how powerful that is, how big the impact zone of it, it is. The impact of the Holy Spirit in your life and my life will go to the ends of the earth. Isn't that incredible? That power is a huge power that rose Jesus Christ from the grave. And we need to wait on that power because the alternative is to do things in our own power. And the impact zone of our own power is not usually even our family. <laughs> Um, you know, we can't impact people, but God can impact people. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's praying for it. It's, it's asking for this power. Are you walking in that power? Then he says this, when you receive that power, you will be my witnesses. Um, how do you witness? In fact, if we think of a courtroom, um, people are on the witness stand or they're they're the people that are witnesses at a, in, a, in a courtroom. Um, how do they witness? Completely with their mouth. And what he's saying is, you will be my witnesses by just giving a testimony of my power. Simply think of your life. This was what my life was like before him. This is my life now. This is what he's done. Have you ever just told anybody, you know what? I was going through the exact same thing that you're going through. And this is what God did. Uh, I, I, was, I was experiencing that, and this is what God did. You will be my witnesses. Um, I don't know. There's not a person in this place that's not witnessed this week. Maybe you've not witnessed to God's power, but you witnessed to something. Uh, every one of us, we get excited about something, and we tell people. We don't... Nobody guilts us into that. We just do it automatically. Um, in the first service, somebody came in and they were sitting down. I noticed that they had a pen and they were writing in a book. And I, I said to them, what kind of pen do you have? Like a pen, like this little writing instrument, meaningless little pen. What kind of pen do you got? And they pointed and showed it to me and I go, it's not the best pen. <laughs> you know what the best pen is? Let me go get it for you. And I went to my office, I came back, I brought them a pen, said, this is the best pen. She wrote down for about five seconds, she said, um, yeah, I'm going to buy one of these. No, you just keep it. <laughs> you just keep it. This is a gift for me. This, and we just began to talk about that. What This week, you've gotten excited about something, and you've told somebody about something. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives within you and made you to do that. You will be 
a witness to something. Do you want it to be about Tide and what, it, what it's done or Starbucks and what you drank? Or can you tell what God has done in your life? You will be my witnesses. Can you tell what God has done in your life? I was hurting and this is what God. I was helpless and this is what God. I was in prison and this is what God did. I had nothing and this is what God did. Everybody's got a story. Just tell your story. Just tell what God has done, the power of what God has done in your life. And that is the book of Acts. Just describing that. Our impact is not just on the people around us. Our impact, he says, will go to the ends of the earth. A cool story with that. Um, recently, we packed some food right here in this room. Um, uh, we you know, enjoyed it. It we went really, really well. But as we were packing food in this room, uh, we knew that uh, Jerry Cooper, Marvin Bozard, Scott Drummond, they were uh, overseas. And I just said, hey, why don't we pray for this team that's overseas while we're packing in this place? Did you know that, um, long story short, they've, they've finally got it to where uh, Jerry Cooper, Marvin Bozard, the groups that uh, they were with will get the food that we packed. Like they're literally going to send it to those. They, they got to write down the, the ministries, the places that are in Uganda and Kenya, and that food that we packed will go right there. Isn't that great? Not because we did it, because God did it. I love God's stories. I love what, like God just takes something that we do, and then he blows it up, and he just, and he, and he makes that impact go to the ends of the earth. This is our God. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Now let's move on to Acts chapter 2. And uh, uh, if there was a Mount Rushmore of Bible chapters, um, chapter 2 of Acts would be on my Mount Rushmore list. Um, Genesis 1 would be on mine. I, you know, there, I'd pick a psalm that would be on there. But Acts chapter 2 would definitely be uh, on my list. It is, it is a powerful, powerful passage it says, when the day of Pentecost came, do you remember when we were studying the different festivals? There's Passover and Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles. This was the day that the Holy Spirit came to earth and began to live inside people. Isn't that amazing? God Almighty came to live inside you and me. <laughs> like, in, like, is there anybody else that's a little amazed by that? God Almighty came to live inside of you and me and do his work through you and me. On this day of Pentecost, they were all together in one place. Oh, you see the word together everywhere. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. What are they hearing? It's like a tornado. What are they seeing? It's like a forest fire <laughs> that's going on. They're seeing these things and hearing them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You go like, whoa, I understand being filled with the Spirit, but what's this speaking in other tongues kind of thing going on? Well, notice the next verse. Um, you know what happens at the festivals? People from every nation come to Jerusalem to worship God. As he's designed for thousands of years before that, he's told them, come to Jerusalem and worship on this day. So you have many people from many different countries, and they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Isn't that cool? That God took a human being, filled him with the Holy Spirit, and out of their mouth came exactly the words that somebody else could hear. It was, it was a supernatural power. This is a power that every one of us has probably experienced, probably didn't, didn't know we were experiencing, 
But every one of us, like, we should say, God, do it again, again, and again, and again. Have you ever said something and later a person came to you and said, hey, when you were talking, you said this, and it deeply impacted me. And you go like, wow, I didn't even know what I was saying like in that. I've had people come to me and say, when you said this in the message, um, like that really impacted me. And I go, I go home to my wife and say, did I ever say that in the message? Many, 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 many times. They'll tell me something that I said that I'm pretty certain I didn't say. So what, it, what happened? Or like I didn't think to say. It is God using a mouth and then somewhere between my mouth and our ears, we hear what God wants us to hear. That is shocking. You know what I think is also shocking? That this happens all the time in marriage the exact opposite way. <laughs> I, said, I said that, and you heard that, you know. And if, it, if the devil can change our tongue, can't God do it? Wouldn't you want God to do it? Wouldn't you want to say, God, I pray in this atmosphere that not only what I say, but what we hear would be your words. It's exactly what I prayed. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our heart be pleasing in your sight. Wouldn't that be great if we said that in marriage? Or we said that in a, like for, at, at a workplace? We, before we walked into work, we say, may the words of my mouth and may... The meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. What, do you notice that the first mark of the Holy Spirit impacting a person's life came out of their mouth? And I, Like this is so important. I have a test for you right now. Um, so this is a very, very quick test. And it is a very accurate test of what's in your spirit at this exact moment. Okay? So I want you to take your hand. And I want you to place it on a block of wood and hit it with a hammer. <laughs> you, you don't have a hammer right now. Go home and do it. Um, hit it with a hammer. And guess what's going to come out of your mouth? <laughs> uh, whatever's going to come out of your mouth is whatever's in your spirit. If there's bad in your spirit, it's going to come out of your mouth. You notice that there are many times something jumps out of our mouth before we ever know it. Put yourself in a situation where you're scared. You're in a car, or you're the passenger in a car, and somebody else is driving, and you're about ready to get into a car accident. What do you say in that moment? Um, what comes out? Like, you know, like that, that's what's in a person's spirit. Pain and fear, if it's in your spirit, it's going to come out in times you don't want it to come out because it's in your spirit. God wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit. So there's just a few verses that I want you to look at, and I want to prove this point. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. says, Then Peter, filled with the Spirit, what's the next word? Said. In fact, it's a big, long sermon that he goes into. He's filled with the Spirit. How does it come out? His mouth. Um, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. By the way, it's a great message. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and, what's the next word? And spoke. They spoke the word of God boldly. We were filled, it comes out of our mouth. Acts chapter 19, verse 6. Then Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke. This time in tongues and prophesied. Prophecy is, is speaking exactly the word that somebody needs to hear at exactly the right moment. It's a great thing to have in our life. Um, Ephesians 5, verses 8, 18 and 19. Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. Do not get drunk on wine. Uh, what happens when a person gets drunk? Something comes out their mouth, doesn't it? It's hilarious, whatever comes out of their mouth. What comes out of their mouth? What's in their spirit comes out of their mouth. Uh, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to trouble. Um, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. What's the next word? speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Uh, lastly, Ephesians 4, 29 and 30. This is the uh, kind of the reverse of this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, 
but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do you catch the two? Like, have you ever been in that moment when you're with somebody you really trust, you really know, and you kind of drop your guard, and whatever's in your spirit comes out your mouth? And you're like, I'm not very proud of that. I'm not very, I, I shouldn't have said that. And what he's saying is, like, we've got to be so careful not to let any unwholesome talk coming come out of our mouth because what happens is it grieves the Holy Spirit. It quenches the Holy Spirit. Just kind of puts a lid on what the Holy Spirit does in our life. Instead of being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit kind of like just takes a step away from you in your life. We don't want that. How do we guard against it? Don't let any unwholesome talk. Um, this week I was uh, chatting with my wife and as we were chatting with my wife, um, there was a moment she said something and then a response came into my mouth and it came into my mind and I'm, I'm literally say the first word and I hear the Holy Spirit as I'm speaking um, speak to my heart and say, shut up, <laughs> shut up. Um, I think that's one of my favorite words the Holy Spirit says to me. Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Um, if I would have finished that sentence I'd have been in the doghouse for three days. <laughs> you ever been there? Where, like, the Holy Spirit wants you to know that what's in your spirit is going to come out. The Holy Spirit, like, be careful, be careful, just be quiet in this moment. And I can point to three or four moments this past week where I believe I quenched the Holy Spirit in a conversation. And do you know what? I'm not proud of that. I, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, not quench the Holy Spirit, or not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do you know what you do? You confess it and say, God, that was wrong. My words, instead of me being filled or immersed in your Holy Spirit, my words, like, made you a little distant. Made you, like, it quenched you. Made you not part of the conversation. I repent, and I'm sorry. Friends, this is... This is where it really comes down to. We're not necessarily the most filled with the Holy Spirit in a church service. I don't know if that's God's design. I believe God's design is we're repeatedly filled with the Holy Spirit as we walk with Him, as we talk with Him, as we listen, as we say, God, make my words your words. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. As we as we get ready to say something and you stop saying what you know is wrong, um, what are we to say? Not what is true, what is helpful for building up others in love. Not just, hey, I, I, I spoke the truth all week. I never lied, but I sure left carnage everywhere I went. That's not God's gift for us. So here's what I'm asking today. I'm asking, do you want to be filled with the Spirit? And if you want to be filled with the Spirit, it comes out our mouth. Could you give God your mouth? Now, I could say like this, um, God, all week, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to speak good words. I, oh God, I promise, I promise, I promise. You can't promise this. What you need to recognize is what's in there that's bad needs to come out. What's, what needs to be filled with is our, the Holy Spirit. So here's the prayer I pray regularly, like this, God, um, I give you my love, I need your love. I give you my words, I need your words. I give you my broken heart, I need your whole heart, I need you to fill my heart. I give you my wounds, God, I need your peace. And what you just basically are saying is, I want to give God my, um, the, the stuff that keeps me in prison because what I want is his peace and his power. I want to walk in his peace and in his power. So let's, let's pray that right now. Um, I believe that many people are filled with the Spirit and they start with repentance. Uh, in Acts 2.38, Peter said this, Repent. 
and be baptized and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. It starts with repentance. And so perhaps in a moment you can just say, God, this is what I repent of. These were my words and they hurt people. This is my empty heart. These are my actions and they've hurt people. God, you said not to do it and I did it anyway. And here's the good news. As we confess our sin, God says, I will cleanse you and I will fill you. So in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would receive the cleansing of God, the blood of Jesus upon the cross. In the name of Jesus, you're forgiven. Can you just say that? I'm forgiven. I am forgiven. And now instead of saying, God, fill me, I want you to say like the faith version of that. I am filled. I am filled with God's spirit. I am forgiven and I am filled with God's spirit. I am forgiven. I am filled with God's spirit. Make my words your words, God. Make my thoughts your thoughts, God. Make my actions your actions, God. God, I wait upon you. I'm not going to go out in power and in my own power. I'm going to wait for your power so that you will line me up at exactly the right moment to share my testimony of what you did. God, I'm going to be your witness in this world, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's stand for our benediction today. I pray that God would order your steps so that at just the right moment, at the right time, that you would have a testimony to share that somebody is waiting to hear. In Jesus' name, amen.